against Jake Mondello, who can also play. Mm -hmm. He's very young, but he's got two Grand Prix top eights on the resume. And our players are about to start right now. Both 3 0. And now a mountain here for John. Round number four underway. Mandela will draw. He'll play a planes. Black, white versus white, red here. Finkel with a planes. And he's got a core blade world. Fortified Rampart here for Mondello. Mondello, a player we've seen quite a bit on the Open Series, has some success there. Now he's working his way into the Grand Prix circuit, the Pro Tour circuit. Saw him at Grand Prix Seattle Tacoma last weekend. Played Reanimator there. Core Blade World did get vigilance from the ally. And we criticized this card a lot in the match against Brock Parker and Brock Parker's blue black control deck. Against Finkel, much more aggressive curve. Uh, this card should do some good work. Looks like a Lantern Scout here for Mondello. Pass the turn back over to Finkel. Finkel's deck looks to have a bit of an ally theme over here. And it has a bit of yeah. a Gideon theme. Which is also an ally. Also Produces true. allies. Yeah. So combo. Yeah. So Gideon is going to come onto the battlefield. It is going to start with four counters. As you mentioned, it does make allies. Mm -hmm. It's an ally itself, which is very nice. And here come the beatdowns. Fortified Rampart is going to block. McKinney Patrol is going to come in here for a point of damage. And now we're going to head back over to Mondello, who's, uh, who's gotten a little rough right now. When we saw Gideon on camera before against Corey McDuffie, McDuffie had a curve of flyers equipped, and Gideon was basically played on an empty board. Mondello is in a much tougher spot right now. No real way to generate any offense against this Gideon. And Finkel's got other stuff going on. Well, they both played four mana spells. If you're going to play anything into a Gideon that's not your own copy of Gideon, it might as well be a flyer. I agree. This is Mondello's best hope of stabilizing this game. Over the course of the next couple of turns, he may be able to attack, attack down the Gideon. Then he'll have a 2-3 left over, which hopefully will do some work against the 2-2s two that Finkel will have. So Corey Griffin is here. Gideon is going to go up to five which means it's ready to attack. Oh, oh this, is, this is a pretty good draw. There's it's not a, a bad curve. There's a hero of Gamafada. Sure, all the creatures are indestructible and have vigilance and first strike and are attacking. So uh, feel free to block as you'd like, Jake. All right, I like the wall in front of Gideon. That smart, seems smart. That block I like. Yeah. <laughs> Start there. And it looks like the Griffin is going to get in front of the core blade roll. Indestructible plus first strike. Good combination for making your attacks feel safe. <laughs> yeah. Hard for this to go too wrong. Yeah. Mondello with a small red splash deck. You see he's got a mountain in his deck. It's on the battlefield now. Let's see what this play is going to be. It's a Cholestra Healer. This is quite the uphill climb that Jake Mondello does have. Looks like the Griffin's going to go towards Gideon, maybe. The splash here at Mondello's deck is for an Angelic Captain. Okay. He also has a Pilgrim's Eye to go get the mountain. Sure, so kind of a free roll there. Not quite free. I mean, he's playing two mountains, okay. which implies that, you know, it, it's not exactly free for him, but Juice is still probably worth the squeeze. Mondello does have complete disregard in hand right now, too, so he is uh, trying to fight the good fight. It's not going to be easy, though. A mountain there from Finkel's land number six. Boy, John's deck is a doozy. He's got a Resolute Blade Master and a Munga Ambush Leader, too. My goodness. It's a theme deck. Like, yeah. A theme of really he, good he, cards. He bought the Ally Precon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the colorless land that he has on the battlefield is a copy of Spawning Bed, by the way. Complete Disregard is going to take care of the core Blade World. McKinney Patrol number two. It's an ally. So yeah, there are going to be some triggers here. The vigilance and all that jazz. Also indestructible. And here come the beatdowns. Gideon did move up, by the way. Fortified Rampart is going to jump in front of that. Gideon moving up is also doing some very good work here for Finkel in terms of insulating his, his Gideon from getting attacked back in the air. Yeah. 
And attacking with a 5-5 here is not that much worse than generating a 2-2. So some damage is going to come across here. Yeah. Follow up here for John is a Valakut Invoker. And he's empty handed, but he's got one heck of a board. And every land's good and every spell's good. Yep. He's worked himself in the situation where a spell could be cast and a land contributes towards spawning bed and the Invoker. So great setup here. It's an enviable situation for the Hall of Famer. Plus, with the Gideon, he's up like 20 bucks. <laughs> so you just. <laughs> Really got to like what's going on here. There's a conduit of ruin. It's going to trigger in search of a card here for Mondello. Mondello thinking rune processor. Think of those are all not doom and gloom for Mondello. I know that Finkel's starter has been pretty splashy here. It's getting harder for Finkel to uh, make these attacks. And if he wants to make an ally with, with Gideon, Mondello still has some pretty good blocks on the way back to manage the board. And he can start continue to wear down the Gideon with his flyer. Mm -hmm. If Mondello happens to draw an ally and trigger the Lantern Scout, he comes back for a lot of damage. And, and his board in terms of, of power and toughness is, is a lot better than John's. John has just been very synergistic thus far. Oh, we'll see what John's draw is. Again, he's empty-handed. Got a beautiful board. Gideon is going to go up to three. What is this? Okay. <laughs> well, now those creatures have <laughs> double strike. <laughs> Thanks, Resolute Blade Master. <laughs> a fine way to top off this draw. <laughs> oh, that's just perfect. And you're Mondello, too. You know, you, you've, you've worked so hard to kind of maintain everything. It looks like you've actually got a shot to come back in this thing. Yep. And then that happens. I'm working down Gideon. I'm doing pretty good. Nah, well. My board's big. If I draw an ally, I gain a bunch of life. Everything has double strike, vigilance, indestructible. So, sure. Sure. All right, Jake. You're three. Back to you. There's the rune processor. What's this? It's just going to be Rune Processor. He's going to gain five life. Nah, he can't attack. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, there's no, uh, there's really no overcoming that draw, Jake. No, you know what? Can't be mad about that one. Nope. Sometimes you just get crushed. And that's actually yeah. what happened there. John that, Finkel up a game. That draw was enough to e elicit a smile even out of John. You don't get that much. No. Typically all business at the table, but that draw was, uh, that draw was silly. So we are going to take a look at both decks here, and we are going to start with Finkel, who you saw, uh, you saw most of the good stuff there. He's got a Courier Griffin. He's got that Gideon. Uh, Hero of Gabafado. We saw Inspire Charge as a Pump Spell, Core Blade World, some McKinney Patrols. Jeez, a Sheer Drop, a Smite the Monstrous, a Stasis Snare. That's a nice card, too. The Red brings a Stone Waker from Akuum. Nettle Drone, Ondu Champion, Outnumber, Stone Fury. Valakut Invoker, Valakut Predator. I'm looking for a bad card here, Patrick. I'm having a hard time. Um, <laughs> Munda, Ambush Leader, Resolute Blade Master. How many lands here for John? Seven mountains, a lot of planes, nine of them. He's got a spawning bed and a looming spire, so 18 lands. It's a beautiful deck. John's ally, pre-con available at StarCityGames.com. Yeah. So I actually don't think the matchup is that horrible for Mondello. I know that Finkel has a lot of power in the deck there, and Gideon, of course, is a disaster if it shows up, but... He's pretty good at blocking and gaining life. Uh, if he's able to slow the game down, he's got just a lot of two threes and four five bodies that are going to be better than Finkel's in, in combat a good percentage of the time. And he's got a better top end with that package of rune processor plus some big stuff. So uh, I, I don't think it's that hopeless for him. And he wasn't that far away from stabilizing that game. Once Resolute Blade Master came in, it was trivial. But up until that point, I, I thought Mandela was keeping his head above water. It was, the game was not decided by any, by any stretch. He was doing a pretty good job, all things considered. Yeah, he, he, he had a plan for wearing down Gideon. He was blocking okay. Now, now Finkel was going to be able to make his attackers indestructible a bunch, and there was only so much work that Jake could do in terms of wearing down his board, but he could have at least kept his life total high. And then he was starting to flip the game around with the uh, with his large Eldrazi's, but the Blade Master, just too much. A little too much. A Wait, touch too much. A great way to top off the curve, as you said. John Finkel up a game here with Jake Mondello. The best Magic player of all time. Of all time. Yep. The greatest. Apology, uh, apologies to Kai Bude, also a phenomenal Magic player. Belongs in the conversation. Vinkel Gabriel Massif, Paulo Vitor de Rosa. Yep. A lot of great players to choose from. Finkel is just coming off a of Pro Tour top eight. 
We can't top, forget about that. Top four, I believe. Uh, top four, I believe, yes, is actually correct with the Jeskai Black deck. So. Which is which was disappointing for me to watch because I grew up in the, you know, I was playing the Pro Tour early 2000s. Finkel was the, the guy when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. And he never... I don't recall him losing much on Sundays at all. So yep. when Finkel top eights but doesn't win the event. It's weird. Yeah, I just, yep. just doesn't sound right. What happened? What happened? Yeah. Opening riff to a song, you know, comes on and then the notes are different somewhere in the middle and it just doesn't, <laughs> it just doesn't hit your ear the right way. It's, just, it's the same deal. We're underway here in game number two. A plane's here from Mondello, a mountain there for Finkel. A swamp there for Jake as we had John's way. John has a planes. Back to Jake we go. He'll play a swamp pass to turn back. Who's going to play the first spell here? Planes. There we go. It's a McKinney patrol. Given allies vigilance, complete disregard says kindly leave. Planes here for Mondello. He'll just pass the turn back. Finkel with a mountain. That's a vestige of Emrakul. 3-4 Trampler. For Mondello, it's a Cholestra Nightwatch. 4-5. You gain life, it gets flying. And this is not the world's most impressive card. But these are the kind of threats that uh, Mondello has in his deck that I think make the matchup acceptable for him. He is pretty good at blocking, assuming he gets out of the early game okay, and Finkel hasn't generated too much an advantage with something like Gideon. Just some more creatures there from John and Core Blade World and McKinney Patrol. Those are allies, of course, which is important. But Jake's got a conduit of ruin. And Jake does have big creatures. So that's nice. He'll get to search up something here. Last time we saw Rune Processor, maybe he's got something else to find. He can go for uh, he can go for Rune Processor and just try to get the biggest body. He also has the option of going for Bane of Balaged, which is worth a lot in terms of cards right now, but it's something that Finkel could block and get off the table. I think he's just going for the largest thing possible. Yeah, he's gonna go get a Rune Processor. So it's the planes. And what comes next here for Frankel? This draw clearly not as explosive as the last one. Not nearly as synergistic, not nearly as powerful. A hero of Gabafada is going to give the creatures a vigilance along with indestructible. Some pretty easy blocks, though, for Mondello. First strike, too. But his creatures are just bigger. I yeah. mean, this is a save attack for Finkel. He gets to make it for free, but yep. it's not worth a lot of damage. And now there is outnumber. Taking care of the conduit. Mondello will draw. Swamp. Rune processor. Gain five. That also will give the Nightwatch flying, but he's going to hang back. The problem is that the 7-8, the, the Rune Processor, a couple things can happen here. If Finkel has a removal spell, Mondello doesn't want to take all that damage on the way back. Also, if Finkel has any ally, it's just a freebie for him to attack again. Mm -hmm. And I think Mondello wants to slow the game down. So even though he could have attacked there, I like him just holding back for at least one more turn. Courier Griffin's going to come in, gain some life. Jake's doing a nice job of stabilizing here. He's also got Stonehaven Medic. A combo with things that ask you if you've gained life there, or not. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That's the black-white archetype. Yeah, it, it is a life gain deck. It's life gain. And now Mondello's going to try to go on the offensive. He's got some big bodies out there on defense. Now he wants to try to close this game out. And he's got life to be gained. Finkel, it's six mana. Looks like an awoken sheer drop. Plains is now a 3-3. Now Finkel will just pass the turn back. Over to Mondello. Plains the draw. I believe last card hand Jake, for Jake is Gideon's reproach, I believe. Oh, I take it back. It's something better than that. Angel of Renewal gains life. Life gain deck. Life gain deck. Now, I think more importantly here, though, 4-4 four, four Flyer. Yeah, because Bondello doesn't want to sit on his heels all day here. The, the issue with trying to spend the whole game blocking is any ally allows Finkel to just attack for free. It's a free Alpha Strike, so he's got to pressure him a little bit. Can't attack two at a time. 
Stonehaven Medic is going to gain the life, as you saw Finkel play a Valakut Invoker. And John with only six lands on the battlefield, however, so he's a little ways away from activating that thing. And now Mondell is coming to the red zone with Flyers again. Mondell's got a follow-up. It's goes like Chandler, past the turn back. And you said it right at the top. You know, he's got big creatures. He gains life. He blocks well. I think he's got more evasion on balance than Finkel does. Finkel has a lot of raw power and a lot of synergy, but if Mondello can get to the stage of the game, even something like Gideon now just doesn't really matter. Yeah. There's Hadu Champion. It's going to give stuff Trample. So you got Trample, First Strike, Vigilance, Indestructible. Get in there, everybody. Now, remember, Mondello's at 30, so he can use his life total as a resource here. See what kind of blocks he wants to make. And based on what Finkel's done the last couple turns, I also think that Mondell is assuming the last card in his hand is nothing of note. So we can just make the blocks that look good face up on the table. He doesn't try to need to try to get fancy here. It'll take a healthy amount of damage, but again, he's at 30, so he's got a lot of life to work with. Finkel does have a trick here, it appears. Tandem Tactics, I believe, is the one. That is. Finkel with a little life gain strategy of his own. Uh, up to two target creatures. Get plus one, plus two until the turn, and you gain two life. But that was his last card. He's empty-handed, and Mondello falls down to 19. Finkel goes up to 10. But still a two-turn clock here from Mondello in the air. Yeah. He's got six this turn and then six next turn. And I'd be a little surprised if Mondello were to die the next turn. So he's going to come across here for six, put Finkel down to four. Five mana here from Mondello. Make it seven. He's just going to pass the turn back. So I think Montello's last card in hand is Rising Miasma. Okay. And I believe he just doesn't want to show it. Yeah, a little bluff there, but also just don't want to show it. That, that's the thing. Yeah. Uh, I think that he's got Finkel covered in the air, most likely, and he does not want to show that kind of sweeper. Yeah, because that can really catch him off guard. It's, uh, it's not going to be good against Finkel all the time. Finkel has a reasonable amount of three toughness and so forth, but no reason to show it yep. because it does change the way how the, the matchup gets played. Jake Mondello able to tie things up against John Finkel. Black, white, white, red getting ready here for game number three. Not an explosive draw there for Finkel in game number two, but I would be scared if I was Jake Mondello. He's going to be on the draw here, and we saw what Finkel did in the first game. But you know, that, that first game and that second game, that's, that's got to feel pretty good if you're Mondello. You took his best punch in game one. That, it's hard to imagine Finkel produces a draw much better than that one. And until the Blade Master showed up, it looked like Mondello was on a course to stabilize the game. Yeah. Game two, a lot of the best cards for Finkel showed up again. No Gideon this time, but still a very healthy curve of allies backed up by some tricks and removal. And Mondello was really never at any risk of losing that game. He had firm control of it the whole time. So uh, you're always scared you're, you're on the draw and, and Finkel's deck has some really powerful synergistic draws, but you got to feel pretty good about the matchup given the quality of Finkel's deck. Well, these players will get ready here for game number three. You saw Finkel and his Gideon, his Resolute Blade Master. And he's just a very nice white-red ally side that can give the beatdowns. Doesn't look like any bad cards going on here for John. Mondello's deck, though, that black-white life gain deck, a popular archetype in this format, looks pretty good as well. It's uh, it's a little low on power. Uh, his top end's fine. He does have some Eldrazi, so he's not necessarily beat if the game gets to that stage. But Mondello's deck seems very good for chewing up aggressive decks. He's just got a lot of life gain, good size, a lot of evasion. Uh, it's a It's a good recipe for fighting aggressive decks. Well, you have to imagine John's going to play first here. His deck is pretty aggressive. It does feel like a play first deck. Not out of the question that he draws, but I think he'll, we'll see him play first. I don't know if Finkel can afford to get beat to the board. I, I think he does have to take the play here because, um, you know, if Mondello gets out in front of him early, as we saw, his deck produces a lot of size for five and six mana, and Finkel might not be able to be in a position to attack even if he has his synergistic mix of allies. Well, as game three is about to begin here between John Finkel and Jake Mondello, if you are just joining us, Cedric Phillips, Patrick Sullivan, 
along with Nick Miller, Ken Kroc, and the rest of the SCG Live crew. We are bringing you Grand Prix Atlanta, hosted by StarCityGames.com, at SCG Live, hashtag GP Atlanta. For your tweets all weekend long, since the beginning of round number five, we'll be taking and answering as many questions as we can from you guys at home, as we'd love to interact with you and during our broadcast of nine rounds today. Two booster drafts and six rounds tomorrow. Before we cut to a top eight, do one more booster draft, and eventually someone's walking out of here with a whole bunch of money, some pro points, and a little trophy action. A lot of invites to the Pro Tour being given out this weekend. Absolutely. A plane's here for Finkel to start game three. A plane's for Mondello. He'll mimic that play. Over to Finkel we go. Nettle drone the draw. He'll play a plane. So he'll pass the turn back over to Mondello, who's drawn a plane. He'll play a swamp. And now there is a Stonehaven medic. Finkel will draw. He's got a mountain. He's got a nettle drone. He'll pass the turn back over to Mondello. Mondello will draw. It's time to go searching with Pilgrim's Eye. They'll get a Plains. Notable that Jake did not search with the Mountain there. It's possible in a matchup this fast that he's cut out the red. Okay. I would strongly consider I, Angelic Captain's a great card. And it's possible Mondello just has the Mountain in his hand already. But in fast matchups in Seal Deck, often the way I sideboard is cut the splash color and just try to become a two-color deck because you can't afford to stumble. Mondello also willingly searching up a third planes as opposed to a second swamp. Just kind of things to keep in mind here as we make our way through this game. Finkel with the McKinney Patrol. Pass that turn back. Over to Mondello, who will draw. Picked up a swamp for the turn. There is that third planes. Just has to pass the turn back. Finkel will shoot Mondello with that nettle drone. And we go back John's way. Note that John did not play a fourth land there. Actually, it was only his, no, it was his fourth turn. Yeah, yeah he's down a he land drop. It. Yep. And there's Looming Spires. I'll target Nettle Drone. Looks like it might be time for some beatdowns with both creatures. It's a safe tack on the board. There's nothing to do with the 4-2. And if Mondello wants to double block the 2-2, two -two, Finkel can still kill the Pilgrim's Eye at least. Yep. To say nothing of the possibility of Finkel just having a trick here. So a yep. safe alpha strike. John in his second main phase. The plan, Akum Stone Waker. Mondello going to gain life quickly on tap and draw. There's a swamp. Just going to pass the turn back. Got to wonder what's going on in Jake's hand. Finkel will draw. He's found another land. That's land number five. It's a plains. What's the follow up here for John? It is Munda, the ambush leader. That's going to trigger. Take a look at the top four cards of your library. If you do, reveal any number of ally cards from among them, then put those cards on top of your library in any order, and the rest on the bottom. Looks like all four head to the bottom there for Finkel. He's going to come in here with Munda and the McKinney Patrol. The Stonehaven Medic will block the patrol. The damage from Munda will come through. Mondello's going to gain a life, go back up to 14, it appears, as he'll draw. There's Swamp. And now there's Kata with a Ruin. Trigger, time for Jake to search. It's been Ruin Processor every time. He's trying to get the biggest thing into play. Yep. We saw this be very effective for him game two and almost be effective game one. Yeah, he was, uh, again, very close to turning around the first game. Yeah. Though I don't believe anything's been processed at this point. Not so yet. we're looking at just a 7 8, but a 7 8 is still a lot bigger than anything John has in play. There's a mountain for Finkel. That's land six. He had some slight mana troubles, but appears to be done with that. Six mana. Oblivion Sower. So Ruin Processor is gone. There's a Plains. 
John will get that. Wants to see what's been exiled. But now Jake's plan of getting rune process on the battlefield, that's out of the that's out of the question. So he'll draw. No, I think Finkel may have missed a trigger on the nettle drone. I'm not possible. I'm not sure if that was pointed to ahead of time. Sure. Well, there's the Bane of Balagad. Our first time seeing that this weekend. A, a, a lot of people consider this along with a Breaker of Armies to be the best non-rare Eldrazi's. These are the game winners you're looking for. Sure. Nothing wrong with Rune Processor and some of the other ones, but these have the most impact on the board. 7-5 in attacks. Defending player, that'll be John Finkel if the Bane of Balagad does attack. Exiles two permanents that he would control. Finkel will smite the mm, monstrous. Good turn. Yeah. <laughs> I was about to say, it was starting to look like the first person to come up with a removal spell here was going to have a huge edge. And Finkel came up with two of them. Yeah. Stasis snare as well. That's a big deal. Heck of a turn. Now Finkel gets to come into the red zone here. Both Eldrazi gone. Finkel with just a mountain left in hand. Oblivion, so we're thinking about coming into the red zone. Well, I think the sower is definitely coming in. It's just a question of anything else. With Finkel tapped out here, it's safe for Montello to offer up some double blocks and triple blocks on the smaller threats. And I think John would just prefer to keep Munda in play. Yep. There's no reason to, to push right now. Looks like Mandela's going to take that damage. He'll untap and draw. He had a nice board, but it's gone now. Jake with at least a swamp and hand and a plane. He's going to play the planes. Looks like a copy of Demon's Grasp in hand. Not an answer to the sower. Nope. And that's the major problem right now. There's Demon's Grasp to take care of Munda, however. That's got to bite the dust, so minus five, minus five will take care of it. That'll Jono shoot you. And now we're head back Finkel's way. Mandela falls down to six. Think with the mountain. See how the draw step is. Remember, Gideon is looming in that deck. We saw it game one. Didn't see it game two. Have yet to see it in game three. Uh, John's still in a very good position here. Just uh, he's in lands and spells territory again, mm -hmm. as we've seen before. The Stone Waker does a lot of work here. It, it, the the three one is a viable attacker, and Finkel's got other stuff going on in play. Looks like Finkel coming into the red zone with a few creatures here. The Sower and the 3-1. As you mentioned, he's in the lands and spells territory are all good. Mondello going to do some blocking here. Looks like Jake doesn't want to take any damage. And Circling Fissure is the card. And that card came in for this matchup. Yep. Jake is not playing a game one. But again, for an aggressive matchup, you can see he cut the third color. He brought in some fogs. I, I like this kind of sideboarding. Mondello was just to land before passing the turn back very quickly. Finkel again in that enviable situation where lands will turn on the Stone Waker and spells can just be cast. Here's three mana. Another McKindy Patrol. Mondello does a little bit of blocking there. There's an Eldrazi sign left over. It's a carrier thrall that was on blocking duty. Mondello was just a swamp past the turn back. Going to be able to gain a little bit of life with that Stonehaven medic, but Nettle Drones is going to kind of undo that. Yep. So not really getting anywhere. 
and uh, Mandela's creatures are so small now that John can actually start attacking with some of the the second tier of his threats here, start wearing down Mandela's board and I think we're not that far away from Pickle being able to Alpha Strike for the win. Uh, the tough thing here for Jake is that if, if John doesn't play a land pre-combat, that means that he drew a spell. Yeah. Because if he drew a land, he would just play an action for the Stone Waker. So that means that you know, okay, well, a spell's coming. And it's Nandu Greatheart. And Jake is going to extend the hand as he's drawn two more planes, and he cannot get out of this situation. John Finkel going to win this match over Jake Mondello, two games to one. His white-red deck is a thing of beauty, and this is a dangerous deck for him to have against other players. This is going to be maybe, I don't want to say it's going to guarantee 9-0, but he's got a heck of a deck, my friend. Well, it